We are going to talk about a research article that covers very interesting topics. The effect of the 28-day lunar cycle and solid tides on earthquakes. The research article is called Correlations Between Solid Tides and Worldwide Earthquakes, Magnitude Greater Than or Equal to 7.0 Since 1900. It was written by Chen, Chen, and Zhu and published in Natural Hazards and Earth System Sciences in 2012. The first analysis in this paper assesses the effect of the 28-day lunar phase on earthquakes. The goal of the subsequent analysis is to evaluate the triggering effect of the semidiurnal solid tide on earthquakes. The diurnal cycle occurs every 24 hours as a result of one rotation of Earth. The semi-diurnal cycle refers to the 12-hour cycle, a cycle that occurs twice a day. Also note here that we are discussing the Earth tide, which is not the same as the ocean tide and does not show identical effects and timelines. In figure one, we see the global epicenter distribution and earthquake frequency relative to the lunar solid earth tides. In figure 1a, the top figure, we see the epicenter distribution of worldwide earthquakes. The earthquake magnitude is reflected by the size of the red circle. The largest circle on the top reflects earthquakes 8.0 to 8.9 in magnitude. The next circle down represents earthquakes 7.0 to 7.9 in magnitude, and so on downward. In figure 1b, we see an earthquake frequency distribution of worldwide earthquakes of magnitude 4.0 or greater relative to the monthly lunar solid phases using 420,000 747 earthquakes. The difference between the lunar celestial longitude and the solar celestial longitude is used for calculating the number of earthquakes. On the x-axis in figure 1b, we see phases on the solid tide wave of the moon monthly period. The degrees of the phases are represented from 0 degrees on the left to 180 in the middle and 360 degrees on the right. On the Y vertical axis, we see the earthquake frequency from 0 at the bottom to 12,000 at the top. When we look at the blue lines representing the earthquake frequency across the phases, we see some variation, but not a significant level. The results here suggest that there is no clear detectable effect of the 28-day lunar phase on earthquakes at least for earthquakes greater than 4.0 in magnitude. However, there is in reality a tiny effect of the 28-day lunar cycle. Significance is not regularly found though because the effect is extraordinarily small. But importantly, it's not always the case that lunar effects on earthquakes are hardly detectable. For instance, the moon has been found to significantly cause earthquakes during the supermoon, when there is a full moon during the perigee part of its orbital, when the moon is closest to Earth. An interesting note here is that the 28-day lunar cycle is very significantly associated with variations in moonquake frequency, quakes on the moon. The reason Earth doesn't show the same strength of statistical effect is because the mass of the Earth far exceeds the mass of the Moon. All in all, this study found no statistically significant effect of the 28-day lunar cycle for earthquakes greater than 4.0 in magnitude. But we remain aware that in reality there is some contribution of the 28-day lunar cycle on earthquakes, and this effect becomes clearly significant when combined with other factors, such as the moon's orbital.
the last analysis focused on the association between the phases of the 28-day lunar cycle and earthquakes. The goal of the analyses that follow is to evaluate the triggering effect of the semi-diurnal solid tides on earthquakes. The diurnal cycle occurs every 24 hours as a result of one rotation of Earth. The semi-diurnal cycle refers to the 12-hour cycle, a cycle that occurs twice a day. The first analysis will be the analysis of the semi-diurnal cycle on a single earthquake and its aftershocks. The second analysis will be the effect of the semi-diurnal cycle on the onset of large earthquakes worldwide. In figure two, we see the epicenter distribution map of earthquakes greater than or equal to 4.5 in magnitude of the aftershock sequence of the magnitude 6.3 New Zealand earthquake, depth of 5.9 kilometers, which occurred on February 22nd 2011. Data are from the Earthquake Commission and GNS Science in New Zealand. The upper left portion of this figure shows the island of New Zealand with a red box around the region of Christchurch, the approximate area where the earthquake aftershocks took place. The larger portion of the figure shows the Christchurch region and the red dots represent the specific locations of the aftershocks that were greater than or equal to 4.5 in magnitude. In figure 3 we see the occurrence time distribution of earthquakes in the aftershock sequence of the magnitude 6.3 earthquake near Christchurch that occurred on February of 2011. The earthquake is superimposed on the theoretical curve of the solid earth tide. Theoretical solid tides before and after the main shock were calculated using the George Darwin model. On the x-axis we see the day from February 21st, 2011 to February 27, 2011. On the y-axis, we see the surface strain, dimensionless quantity. The surface strain can normally describe the changes of solid tides. On the surface strain line, the wavy line, we see red tick marks and associated earthquake magnitudes in red writing of the aftershocks greater than or equal to 4.5 in magnitude at their given surface strain strengths and times. The large magnitude 6.3 earthquake occurred near the zero degree phase of the semi-diurnal solid tidal curve. Most of the large aftershocks occurred close to the zero degree, 90, 180, and 270 degree phases. As a whole, the results suggest that the semi-diurnal solid tide had an effect on larger aftershocks of the 6.3 New Zealand earthquake. In figure 4, we see the earthquake distribution relative to the phases of the theoretical semi-diurnal wave calculated for each location and time of large earthquakes of magnitude 7.0 or greater worldwide since 1900. 2015 earthquakes of 7.0 magnitude or greater have occurred as of February 2010. On the x-axis, we see phases on the solid tide wave of the semi-diurnal period. The intervals are broken into degrees of 15. On the y vertical axis, we see the earthquake frequency from 35 at the bottom to 135 at the top. While earthquakes occur in fairly high frequency across all of these phases on the solid tide wave of the semi-diurnal period, we see four distinct increases in earthquake frequency across the phases 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and 270. Overall, this research supports the notion that the semi-diurnal period triggers 
large earthquakes. To summarize, no significant effect of the 28-day lunar cycle on earthquakes greater than or equal to 4.0 in magnitude was found in this particular research study. But we remain aware that in reality there is some contribution of the 28-day lunar cycle on earthquakes, and this effect becomes clearly significant when combined with other factors such as the moon's orbital. The semi-diurnal phases were found to significantly affect the main and aftershock sequence of the Christchurch, New Zealand 2011 earthquake and the main shock of large worldwide earthquakes since 1900. This research is important for earthquake prediction and can be potentially useful for the mitigation of disaster during aftershock earthquake sequences. Safety precautions can be taken during the most dangerous time intervals.